Well, I'm Henry Zeppa, and I'm a computational chemist, and I've been a computational chemist for more years than I care to remember. And so over the years, uh, my use of computers generated vast amounts of data, numbers, pictures, and eventually three-dimensional models. And so we've always been interested in how to share all this wonderful data, how to make it as visual as possible, and how to make it as useful as possible to my fellow researchers. Essentially, what we've come to describe much of what we do is FAIR, F-A-I-R. Um, that means that what we do has got to be findable, it's got to be accessible, it's got to be interoperable, which basically means that people can use it for purposes other than the purposes that we found for it, and it's got to be reusable, which means that the legal aspects amongst others have got to be sorted out. I'm Charles Romain, I'm an inorganic uh, chemist and uh, an early career academics at Imperial College Lyon. I work in the field of polymerization catalysis and uh, inorganic uh, catalysis. As young in this uh, field, uh, uh, what I would like, uh, for example, is when I would like, when I'm looking for data, I would like to access directly to the raw data or to data that I can process myself or observe myself rather than a picture or PDF file, which is something that you can't interpret and reuse later on. I'm very new in the field. I'm using it now for three, four months. I try to manage my own research data using all the setups that have been designed at Imperial College with the new uh, with the computing portal or the data repository that we have at uh, Imperial College, eventually using Fiction. Research data management is about being able to retrieve something you did perhaps up to seven years ago. Most of us have got terrible memories. Um, something you did seven years ago, or maybe the student who did something seven years ago possibly may not be around anymore. And so you've got to put in efficient procedures for tracking back to what you did seven years ago and recovering it. And you've got to recover it in an immediately reusable manner. There's no much point in finding that the data is in an obscure way or format that you can't use. So that's the essence of research data management. But it isn't just you who needs to be able to do that. It's any other scientist in the world. And so I'll tell you a story about um, an event that actually started seven years ago, but was revived a week ago. A colleague of mine um, with whom we did a collaborative project seven years ago came to see me last week and said, um, another research team has looked at the work we did and they've come up with a rather different answer. And we need to reconcile what we came up with seven years ago with what they've now reported. Could you go back to the data that you produced seven years ago and restart the project effectively. So we fortunately had been managing our data seven years ago. And so on this particular instance, it and I'm not exaggerating, it took me about five minutes to find the data, um, another two or three minutes to reuse it. And we were up and running with a, like part two of our project within about half an hour. And, and the good news, by the way, is that uh, we hadn't done anything wrong. The new people hadn't done anything wrong, but there were some very interesting differences between our approaches that accounted for the different outcomes. And we're happy that basically we now understand it. And finally, I should say that at any stage in the last seven years, anybody else in the world could have done what we did last week because we made our data completely open and available to everybody. So if someone else had decided to do what we did last week, they could have done so with the data that we made available. 